Hello world and welcome to this in-depth review of the Storm Racing Drone from Helipad. Let's go straight to the point. Should you buy this kit? So the answer is yes, you should. Um, so stop looking at the picture or going on YouTube looking at video and wondering, wow, should I buy this? The answer is yes. This is a very good entry level. The price is very good. The quality is everything is, is spot on. And go buy it. You're going to have so much fun. You're going to learn so many things. Let's talk in detail about the uh, the parts. So um, you get some uh, Emax 2204, 2300 kV Emax motor. Uh, I'm pretty sure these Emax. ESCs are also um, Emax 15 amp 3S. Do not put 4S on this kit. You'll burn it. Um, the prop or 5 inch with a pitch of 3. Little uh, your FPV camera. The uh, the flight controller is a Copter 3D. The uh, the arms carbon carbon fiber arms are four millimeters. Uh, this is pretty pretty stiff. But the quality of the carbon fiber of of the frame is pretty good. Uh, I have to admit it's for what you pay. It's it's awesome. The video transmitter uh, TS fifty eight twenty three is basically a two hundred milliwatt video transmitter. So it's connected to your camera. It transmit. Um, I. I have the same one, the the exact same one on my Phantom 2, and with a different antennas, I can get um, line of sight. I can get 600 meters, which is roughly 2,000 feet. So here are the tool that comes with the the kit. So this is the Lucknut driver, 10 millimeters, to tighten and loosen your um, your props. Then we get this little guy, which is a Lucknut cross wrench. The 5.5 uh, millimeters is to remove uh, those nuts. Then we have this Allen key which is for these little guy, the your motors. And then we have this mini Allen key which is for the shaft of your motors. And they're, they're missing one of the most important Allen key which is the one right here. So you have to provide your own Allen key to uh, take your uh, mini quad apart. So uh, Helipad is aware of this little hiccup. So they're working on a way to get these uh, in the kit because it didn't make any sense to not have that that Allen key. One other essential accessory you need is a battery warning buzzer basically you plug this in your on your battery they give you the voltage of each cell in this case there's three cell so there's number one number two number three and the moment your voltage of the battery reach a certain threshold the buzzer this little guy will start beeping telling you that it's time to uh, stop draining the battery and to change the setting is basically this button so you're gonna press this mine is set to 3.4 and then you select the threshold you want I recommend 3.4 uh, never discharge a lipo battery under 3 volts per cell and never overcharge more than 4.2 now when it reach 3.4 you you'll hear the buzzer one other thing i did is uh, i took a sharpie and i've uh, marked this side so i know it goes with the black wire so every time i connect this i look at the black wire and i connect it uh, when I install this, I squeeze the buzzer between the frame, top frame, and the battery. 
this works perfectly until you crash so the moment you crash this will fly away and you'll lose it so that happened to me so I recommend you get another one like this and um, yeah there's uh, this is my way I do it you know it, it's you can put some foam if you want something tighter than this there is uh, something I would recommend is um, get an extension like this so basically your your buzzer could be tight wrap at the front underneath but basically this is it you can mount this wherever you want It'll give you um, more choice so let's talk about the negative things about this kit uh, one of the most important for me was the fact that this Emacs frame is basically 280 millimeters across. Uh, Helipad mentioned it's a 250 class, which technically should be 250 millimeters. So this was a big um, something I was not really happy uh, because my local competition clearly state that you want to race in the 250 class you have to be 250 millimeters so rules are rules so all I need to figure it away so basically I 3D printing my own arms so I'll make this entire frame 250 um, the Allen key that does not come with the kit also makes no sense so helipad is aware and uh, I hope future customer will have that little Allen key to take your your mini quad apart I get I get six minute more than six minute and I guess and I get five minutes with this guy so yes this is basically the nanotech are higher quality they can even though it's it state 25c and this is 25c these guys can handle a lot of uh, burst of current and they can I guess the fact that this nanotech might not be a, a true uh, comparison between the two but uh, that's something you need you need to know so uh, I recommend you get different type of battery you search around and you buy a lot of them um, at least four five six batteries because if you get five minutes per flight time per battery well you want a lot of them because you're gonna have a lot of fun with this uh, mini quad and the last negative is well it's more for information but basically this might not be your beginner if you never flown any quad or helicopter or whatever you're you're gonna have a lot of fun <laughs> you're gonna learn the hard way because this is extremely fast extremely agile so if you never you don't know about orientation and when the 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 mini quad comes towards you you're, there's a lot of thing you're gonna learn the hard way and you're gonna panic because it's gonna drift there's no gps it's not stable it's gonna drift and you're gonna do the wrong move the wrong direction and since it's, this is so fast you, you're gonna crash into something so maybe not your your first mini quad but I mean it's it's cheap and the only thing you're gonna break is the prop so why not have fun I mean it's your money to whatever you want with it but you're you're gonna have a lot of fun so let's talk about the pros so this is basically a ready to fly you install the prop put the battery and you're ready to go this is, for me was a big plus the price is uh, pretty good. The build quality is also excellent. Uh, it's a very stable uh, mini quad. And one thing also that I would like to mention is that the um, customer service from Helipad is excellent. It's it's perfect. Customer is number one. They respond to your email really fast. Their English is very good, and I had highly recommend helipad I mean they're, they're top-notch for customer service so yeah this is a, an awesome quad I highly recommend you get one of these and you're gonna have a ton of fun this is your mini quad you do whatever you want with this you customize it the way you want it. and this is so much fun I mean there's so many things you can do it's limitless basically you can change every components you can just do some color trims, the LEDs, the, the props color, you can try uh, two blades instead of three, uh, there's so many things and uh, recently um, Helipad has a new kit 
to update this little guy to a 4S. So they give you brand new motors, brand new ESCs, a, a, a 4S batteries, and you get three blade kit and they have different pitch so you can have and experience the 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 performance you will get from the you know the the 5 inch to 6 inch prop so this is the tips and tricks so basically i'm going to tell you uh things i've learned uh things that might help you uh like i mentioned earlier i'm probably going to repeat myself so uh, let's go the Copter Control 3D, CC3D, this little flight controller has a software on your computer which is called Open Pilot Ground Station Control. I recommend you download it, you connect the USB cable at the back and you make a, uh, a backup of your configuration files. The one thing is my little standoff right there, the, on the original when you receive it, they're gonna be mounted right there on this hole, right there. And I have I've moved them here because I have some larger battery so I can push them really back so uh, different shape of battery as you can see on my batteries I have uh, a p-touch and I have numbers on every battery I put the month because basically these battery you're gonna discharge them recharge them and obviously they have a certain cycle and after a, f a few years depending how you use it the battery is gonna be dead yeah, the little extension cable that I've talked uh, regarding uh, the battery alarm, you can plug this and have uh, your alarm somewhere else on the on the mini quad. The um, yeah, the buzzer. This is something really cool. This guy right there, I bought this on Hobby King, and this is a buzzer that is connected to the transmitter on channel seven and on the remote this guy right there when I flick the switch it activate the buzzer and I'll be able to find my uh, mini quad uh, this is you know I had to learn this the hard way but basically uh, for me right now it's winter so I go fly and obviously you crash in the snow so basically snow can get inside so that's why I put some tape over all the holes and uh, my USB is also protected I'll be uh, waterproofing my electronic. There's awesome tips and tricks on the YouTube Corrosion X, which uh, I've learned recently with the guy from uh, Flight Test. They did a nice little episode on waterproofing your electronic. There's uh, also another company. It might not be compatible, but they have this guard shield that goes all around it. It's like a plastic sleeve, so you slide in, and it, it's a plastic sleeve that protects everything. So this is uh, pretty neat. So I might do something like this or 3D print my uh, guard. Remember, every time you put a new battery, remember to check the CG. You gotta make sure that when you take it dead center right there, with the little, you know, right there, you, when you pick it up, it has to be, you know, perfectly balanced. You can't have it like tilting forward or backward. It's gonna fly, but it's gonna put a lot of stress on the motor because they're gonna work harder to bring the craft level. One thing I did do when I got this I did a nice little P touch right there so I can know which is the beginner because actually when I flew this I think my switch was to uh, uh, intermediaire or expert and it was <laughs> I was too eager I didn't even know about this switch so I think when I did my first maiden flight I was actually on intermediaire or expert and it was it was something you know more stressful than than it could have been and a little trick to remember the prop you know the black here this is the 5030 r this is the I think it's called right-handed but basically this is your your left and this is your right so the 5030 r prop has an R for right so when you look with the camera forward you always remember that the right side is for the 5030 R yeah like I said I added those M3 bolts right there to protect those standoff you could put some um, sleeve rubber sleeve or leave it like that remember to check 
to tighten all your bolts you know I took this apart as you can see I did some tests when I 3D printed my arm I wanted to see if everything fits so I've cut this but I removed the motor but make sure you all those bolts are perfectly tightened up vibration is your enemy it'll loosen everything so put some lock tight make sure there's not, everything is tight check this out I took a yeah, like a color marker and I've marked one two three four because these are the uh, output of your CC3D I did the exact same thing here you could see it a little bit so uh, for whatever reason I take it apart or I crash something rips apart uh, I'll easily know this so even though I took some pictures this you, you, you can't go wrong by having numbers so yeah that's something I would recommend uh, something I've learned is that I've I did some FPV. I was flying around, but actually with the camera and the snow, uh, I missed a tiny little branch that I did not see, so I crashed. So I recommend when you you have your uh, you're ready to fly, you should walk the trail you want to fly and see the thing that could you could miss. Thank you very much for watching uh, this review. You can give me a thumbs up if you like this, share it to your friend, and uh, you're going to have a lot of fun. Good luck. When I went outside to pick up my, uh, my quad, I slipped and the remote fell on the ground, the battery came out, and the, the, the quad started freaking out. So now I have to figure a way to put back the battery in, or uh, try to squeeze my finger between the blades. Good. There is another tip which is super cool. I've learned that basically this remote has a built in timer. You press enter. So we can change between stopwatch and count. Now we're going to press down and we're going to press right. And I'm going to set that to five minutes. Now I simply exit the menu.